There's that 800 horsepower they were talking about. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Hot Lap. Now this is December Hot Lap, which makes this the very last Hot Lap of the 2016 season. I cannot believe I'm saying that. And fair warning, it is gonna feature a lot of Justin and very little of me, but we are gonna have some cool segments and of course, a cool product break as well. Sorry to all your fans out there. I know they're gonna be very disappointed about that, but we got our full SEMA episode coming to you, including some of our hottest Mustangs from the show, some of the funnest ride-alongs, and our friends from Shelby invited us over to check out their new joint, even threw us the keys to one of their very rare Shelby Mustangs. Probably not the smartest idea ever on their behalf, but it was a lot of fun. Check it out. What's up guys? Justin with AmericanMuscle.com and yes, it's that time of year again. SEMA 2016 is officially underway and we couldn't be happier to be out here. This is a huge year for the SEMA show. It's actually the 50th anniversary. We're gonna be showing you all the sights, the sounds, and yes, the ladies of the show. I'm gonna go for some rides. We're gonna unveil some pretty cool new Mustangs and I'm actually gonna show you my top three Mustangs from the show itself. But you know the deal guys, we have a lot to see. Let's get to it. One of the big highlights for us every year here at SEMA, of course, is the Ford booth, right? It's a pretty obvious reason as to why, because we're just surrounded with some of the coolest Mustangs in the entire show, along with some other pretty radical cars, and Ford doing it big as always. Hottest car of the show again with the Mustang, hottest hatchback with the Focus, and yes, the hottest truck of the show with the Ford F-150. Ford's really doing their thing here at SEMA. I'm standing in front of my number three Mustang here from SEMA 2016, the Ford Mustang GT4. Now this thing's based loosely off the GT350 RC. I love a good track focus build and this is definitely it, but besides being functional, Multimatic coilovers, Hollinger sequential transmission, paddle shift stuff, of course that 5.2 flat plane crank motor under the hood, this thing just looks awesome. I would rock a Mustang like this just from a styling aspect. The flat, like battleship gray color, just a really, really sick car. And one that's designed to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to kick some serious ass on the track. Guys, we're here at one of my personal favorite spots at SEMA every year, the Ford out front, because this is just an awesome spot. All kinds of craziness going down, really cool cars. But the best part, of course, is the driving. I get to do some pretty fun ride-alongs, but for now, Blake, show these guys what it's all about. Justin one and Justin two here. <laughs> What's going on, JTP brother? Good, good to see you, man. As always, we're here at Roush. The car looks sick. It's getting a ton of attention. I mean, Roush has got a lot of cool cars. Don't get me wrong, but I think the centerpiece right now is this thing, dude. Talk about the car a little bit more and what's going on with it, man. This is uh, my 2016 Mustang. I debuted uh, this year in Formula Drift. We got the uh, Illuminator with the Roush charger on it now, and it's making nearly 1,000 horsepower. That is crazy. With a dude. Roush tune on a Ford Performance Controls pack, so a factory ECU. So you could buy that crate engine, buy the blower. You could 100% put this setup that I have in your street car. That's insane, dude. I need to do that with my GT when I get home, as a matter of fact. Help me yeah, out everybody there. needs to do that. <laughs> and then you and I, again, we're talking about this, and I think this is probably the coolest thing about the car. A lot of teams will send a car out to a shop. That's not you, man. You built 100% of this car pretty much by yourself, right? Uh, well, probably about 80, 90%. I mean, I definitely have a lot of help. I basically took this car from a 50th anniversary car, stripped it all the way down to the bare chassis, ditch welded the whole thing, built the roll cage. I mean, dude, that, and you did, that's all your work right yeah, there. Yeah, I, I, lo I love working with metal. Pretty impressive, brother, and it shows, man, it really does. Well, I heard there's a chance I might be able to hop in this thing. What can I expect? I think you can expect some popped eardrums, maybe. This thing's definitely loud. I mean, that five liter with the, the supercharger on it is ear piercing. Definitely some smoke in your face and uh, good time. Right smiles, on, man. Smiles on your face. Thank you. 
here with my second favorite Mustang from SEMA 2016. Done up by the guys from VMP Performance. Their track attack Mustang, as you can see here, definitely like an old school Air Force theme. They sprayed it in avalanche gray, much like the GT350 stuff. And the car is just awesome, right? We have a lot of Cervini stuff going on from an appearance standpoint. A one-off Cervini's hood, GT350 inspired, with that little glass window in there, so you can see that VMP Gen 2R blower shining through. Again, this thing's making over 800 horsepower, absolutely ridiculous. About 11 to 12 PSI from that VMP blower. Roush coilovers on this thing. The Forge Star CF10 wheels, custom interior, and it is just an absolutely sick car. How do you take something that's already badass and make it even cooler? Put twin turbos on a dummy. Of course, that's always the answer. Guys, we're here with the Hunicorn RTR Chem Blocks all-wheel drive Mustang, now sporting two shiny new turbos to the tune of 1,400 wheel horsepower. Spinning not one, not two, not three, but all four of those Toyo Proxies are triple eights. I mean, this thing just continues to get cooler. It's awesome. You should like it, and you should twin turbo everything. Now, of course, every year here at SEMA, we try to bring you the coolest cars, the coolest Mustangs, the ride-alongs, all that fun stuff, and that's great. What else is there to see here at SEMA? The girls. Hey, y'all. Welcome to SEMA. See a Lamborghini in that color? Me neither. All right guys, so we came over to the Ford Performance booth looking for some tidbits or some information here on the 2018 Mustang. That didn't happen, but what we did find is something very cool instead. Now what you're looking at here, guys, is the most powerful, naturally aspirated production Mustang basically ever in existence here. 580 horsepower out of this thing. 5.2 liter crate motor, very similar to the Voodoo engine in the GT350, however, not a flat plane crank. So what they do is they take that flat plane out, put a traditional cross plane crankshaft in, put standard uh, regular camshafts in it as well. Still has the GT350 heads that flow really, really well. Cooks one and seven eighths inch long tube headers, cover jet intake manifold and throttle body, and voila, there's your 580 horsepower. So pretty damn cool. I bet this thing would absolutely rip and it's something really cool that we found here in the Ford Performance booth. All right guys, Roush is getting ready to unveil their P51 Mustang for the very first time here. They always do something crazy here at SEMA, so let's get ready to check this thing out. Hey guys, how's it going? The P51 Warbird was a true legend in its time. It helped change the course of World War II by protecting our bombers in hostile territory. But trust me, this car is more than a symbol. 727 horsepower with our Phase 2 supercharger kit, our three-way adjustable Roush track pack suspension system, our Roush body kit with a unique carbon rear wing and front splitter, unique silver and military green paint job, and some new tricks. Had to see what the excitement was all about here at the Chevy booth, and uh, yeah. Sometimes it's not all about Mustangs. Sometimes you just have to look and check out some of your childhood idols. Grave digger, come on guys, right? I know we all saw this thing destroy a few cars in our day. It's pretty cool seeing it here at SEMA. Now guys, I know a lot of us are still kind of on the fence about this whole EcoBoost Mustang thing, but Visimoto is changing everybody's opinion. 900 horsepower to the wheels with this thing. Absolutely crazy, huge snail on it. I know the horse owners might not be for everybody. I don't know who wouldn't like 900 horsepower. Along with the P51 Mustang that Roush unveiled this year at SEMA, they also unveiled this monster, 2017 Roush Nightmare. F-150, pumping out over 600 to the tire, about 550 pound-feet of torque to the wheels as well. Coyote under the hood here with their TVS blower on top, and they're claiming fastest production street truck available in the world. About to go for a rip in Vaughn's car. Whole lot of horsepower, whole lot of fun. Let's get it going. Thanks again, brother. Oh, oh. 
busiest man in motorsports, and maybe SEMA and whatever, man, Vaughn. How's SEMA been for you? We're having a blast, giving real life joy rides to everybody, putting smiles on faces. The cars just keep growing and growing and growing. It's like gremlins, man. Now you added Rocky, the RS, the RTR. You have too many damn toys. No, you can never have too many toys. But yes, the fun fleet is growing. growing. Nice. This week we debuted Brocky, which is a race truck for the Ultra 4 Series. It's got a 600 horsepower Ford Performance Z427. Sounds nice. Great motor. Hell yeah, dude. But let's get to the matter at hand. These things are ready to hit the masses, right, brother? You know, we've taken our sweet time getting these things out, but it's just been refinements, and we're really proud with the final product. Put one of these on your Christmas list, guys. It sounds like they'll be out just in time. I do not know how you do it, man. And we're stoked to have you on the team, brother. Hope you guys have fun. Woo! Now, when it came time to pick my favorite Mustang from SEMA here at 2016, it was a difficult task. I mean, it was the hottest car of the show, so obviously I had a lot to choose from. However, when I stumbled across the 65 Mustang here built by the guys at Timeless Customs called Vicious, it was a very easy choice. This thing is just a complete work of art, valued at over a million dollars when it comes to the build cost here. This is my number one pick from the show, hands down. It is an incredible car. I can't do it enough justice. So here's our buddy Rich from Magnaflow to tell you a little bit more about it. Beyond all the fit and finish, it's really what it performs as. We've got a twin charged Mustang, twin precision turbos feeding a Magna Charger under the hood on an Illuminator Coyote motor. I mean, you can't ask for a better combo for power. We're easily looking at about 1,000 to 1,100 horsepower at the wheels on a car that does have wheels that can actually hold the power. Carbon ceramic brakes, the wide body's there for aero. When you look at the bottom of the car, you actually can't see our exhaust work on it because it's actually got a false floor bottom. The exhaust travels on an underpan for aerodynamics with sandwich between what would be the interior floorboard. Good luck finding the turbos. They're tucked on the sides of the fenders and because they put the fenders in there, you'll see that there's some other attributes they put on the top of the hood and the fender line to accommodate the charge pipes. So everything in the car is integrated. At the end of the day, this was built to run with all that power, a sequential transmission, and of course, it looks to kill. Uh, I'm definitely curious to see what it's gonna do. Just put a driver behind it, we'll see some really impressive things. We came, we saw, we conquered, AmericanMuscle.com, SEMA 2016. We're out of here. Hat tip to Ford, doing it big as always. We want to thank JTP and Vaughn for giving us some killer ride-alongs, nearly making me lose my lunch. But we had a great time, saw a lot of cool Mustangs. We will be back next year, so be sure to stay tuned. In the meantime, for all things Mustang, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com. Hey guys, the product break for this episode is going to feature Extreme Stop Rotor and Brake Pad Kits. AM is now carrying rotor and brake pad kits from Extreme Stop for 1994 to 2014 GT and V6 Mustangs. So you're going to have some options here with these brake kits. You're looking at cross drilled and slotted rotors paired with either carbon graphite brake pads or ceramic brake pads. Depending on what you're looking for from your brake pads, whether it's minimal dust or just a bump in stopping power, you won't be locked into just one option. And of course, having these options is also going to give you different price points as well. The set I have on the table with me today is for the 11 to 14 GT, and you can see that this is a complete set of both front and rear brakes. But like I said, we do have these for a wide range of years, so if you're interested, you can always head over to the site and check these out some more online for yourself. We're out here in Las Vegas to visit our friends at Shelby American. We hear they have something fun lined up for us. We're gonna check out some of the history, some of the cool cars, so let's get to it. So the first car I want to show you guys is something that's really cool. This was one of Carol's personal cars, Shelby GT350. You'll notice it's a convertible. That's the very rare thing about this car. One of only 16 in existence. They outfitted it with the C4 automatic transmission. Again, another rare thing. Roll bar, all that good stuff. But Shelby himself used to drive this car, took it back to Ford. He says, it just, it needs a little something else. So Ford went ahead and installed a nitrous oxide system in this thing for Shelby, just to give it a little bit more pep, which is really cool. Right next to it, the second ever made Shelby GT350 Trans Am car. First one was a prototype, this is number two. And as we understand, it still has the same wheels and tires on this thing that it used to race on back in the days. So just really two cool history pieces here in the Shelby Museum.
I'm standing in front of one of the more modern examples here in the museum and one that is very, very awesome as well. This is the Shelby 1000, actually one of two prototypes of the car. Yes, a thousand wheel horsepower, over 1170 at the crank. Now the story behind this thing is Shelby rode in the Super Snake, over 800 horsepower. Loved it, of course, but asked, when are we gonna have one that makes a thousand? So here it is. They have a deep impact blue version right around the corner here that Shelby actually took his last or final ride in. Got out, big smile on his face and was like, yeah, let's build these things. Now, I'm a huge fan of the 427 Cobra. It's my dream car. It's something I've always wanted since I was a kid. And we're actually standing in front of a really, really cool, and this is actually the birth of the Super Snake, essentially, is what you're looking at here. 427 Cobra, but with twin Paxton blowers on it, twin four barrel carbs, pushing out over 800 horsepower in something that's essentially weighing around 2,000 pounds. So this thing is an absolute rocket ship, and in my opinion, one of the coolest cars here at Shelby. Well, we're here with my buddy Keith from Shelby. Obviously, we just got done drooling all over the stuff inside the Heritage Museum, but now we're kind of in the trenches. This is where everything's taking shape. Tell us a little bit more what goes on out here. Behind us here is kind of the DNA of our company. Everything we do uh, is still based around the Cobras, the PD40s. There's a ton of coupes, and it's really the identity of who we are as a company. And we kind of keep that in mind, and we inject that process in even the newer cars that we build now. We have 22 full-time lifts. And we're mostly working right now on 2015, 16, and 17 Mustang base platforms. So we have the Super Snake, we have the Trilingua, and now the GTE. Let's go check them out. Yeah. Well, Keith, it looks like we're coming up on one that's kind of nearing completion almost here. Tell us about this car, man. Yeah, this one is a 2017 Super Snake. The Super Snake is really the end-all, be-all street car that we offer. Uh, this one here is the polished triple supercharger on it. It makes about 750 horsepower. They get suspension exhaust. The tune is pretty aggressive. Exterior-wise, we get the grills that are placed, uh, the lower splitter. Uh, it's a very special custom hood that's very, very functional. It actually provides cold air on top of the blower nice. and extracts out the hot air. So the biggest challenge is when you make this kind of power is heat management. A lot of people might see like a, a hood like that and you're like, oh, well, it's a bunch of vents, what the hell do they do, you know? Yeah. But everything you design is fully functional. Absolutely. We have a lot of probes and data acquisitions we do on these cars before I actually start building them. So. Cool. And we know this is your street bruiser, but we also yeah. have something that's kind of like your track weapon as well behind this. Can yes. you go check that thing Absolutely. out? Absolutely. Let's, Let's take a look it. at it, yeah. Right. This car obviously has a lot of heritage to us as a Trillinger racing team from the 60s. Our intention was really to have a really super track capable car that we can tone it down for the streets, so it's fun to drive, enjoyable. But when you get on the track, this is when this car really shines. It has a very special suspension system developed just for us, and uh, this is tuned a lot more aggressively than the other cars. They put out a lot more power, and it puts it in the right place when you're on the racetrack. I understand you have one together, yep. and we might be able to get behind the wheel today, take it out, enjoy the uh, beautiful scenery of Las Vegas. Is that the case? I think we can arrange that for you. Oh, you want to take a look at the one I got ready for you? Let's do it. All right. Cool. Here it is, man. Uh, this is ours for the day. Yes, it is. Any uh, special instructions before we take it out or what? Besides keeping it under 100, uh, this car is one of 50, and this is the concept car. This is the very first car we developed before we even built the prototypes or any customer cars. So, so it's uh, kind of a big deal. Yeah, kind of not replaceable. <laughs> okay. I want so. you to have fun with it and uh, show everybody what it's all about and share the Shelby passion. I appreciate it, brother. Appreciate you guys Thank you so much. Thank you. And try to bring it back some tread on it. No, I appreciate that. <laughs> Now before I get started, I want to apologize for my voice. Our Shelby trip has coincided with our SEMA trip. As you can tell, I've been talking a lot. Bear with me. My voice isn't the story, the car is. And I know you're probably thinking, like Justin, you've already reviewed this thing before, man. We've seen it. Yellow Shelby, carbon fiber hood. And I know it looks really similar to the Shelby GT that we did review a little while back. I promise you, it's not the same car. Actually, not even close. Terra Lingua Mustang is built for one purpose, and that is to be a road course or track monster, as opposed to their straight line sledgehammer, the Super Snake, of course. I'll give you a little backstory on the whole Terra Lingua thing. You guys are probably like, what the hell is this Terra Lingua thing? I've never heard of it. Terra Lingua is a town near the border of Mexico and Texas that uh, Shelby and his buddies used to just fly out to in Shelby's plane. He was a pilot. He would just go there with his bros, 
hang out, shoot guns, ride motorcycles, uh, hunt, tell stories, drink. I mean, it was just, it's their hangout. I mean, that's what it was all about. One night, drinking tequila, eating chili, and they figured, well, hey, let's let's start this race team. Let's, let, let's thumb our nose at the establishment, as they like to say about this car. But it's kind of like the big middle finger to the corporate racing establishment. So they kind of just started this thing on a whim as far as the design, this crazy like jackalope rabbit thing. His balls up because he's saying either I've had enough chili or I've had enough tequila, which I thought was kind of funny. I guess that was their drink of choice down there. He wanted these cars to stand out, so he called it God Awful Yellow. Um, the cool part is they took this, this team out that they just threw together. They went with their 67 GT350, and the very first year, the car won the uh, Trans Am Series. Now they actually did a Terralingua tribute back in 2007, but it was a V6 and everybody was kind of clamoring for a V8 model. So 15, 16 cars rolled around. Shelby said, hell, let's do another Terralingua tribute car. I'm actually in the concept. This is the car before the prototype. This car is pretty special and I don't want to do anything stupid like, uh, you know, whatever. I'm not even gonna go there. I'm not gonna jinx myself. Anyway, that's what this car is all about. It's just getting back to Shelby's heritage. This thing was born and bred for the track. And as such, we'll show you how they got there and some of the cool parts they've used. Now, from an appearance standpoint, again, this thing does look very similar to that Shelby GT we reviewed a little earlier, but there are some subtle differences. On the exterior, and that god-awful yellow, as Bill Neal claims, with the original Terra Lingua, the triple yellow, in my opinion, obviously not that bad, pays homage to the original car. Stripes are a little different with this car as well. You'll find the Terra Lingua badges all over. Number 17, Jerry Titus's number for his original GT350. If you like carbon, you're definitely in luck here at the Terra Lingua. The chin splitter the side splitters here that carbon fiber hood with four extractors out back things are a little different between the shelby gt and the terralingua here that rear spoiler is a little different with the gurney flap the rear diffuser is a little bit different as well as is the ford performance exhaust with the black tips wheel wise you're looking at the forged weld wheels here 20s all around some nice sticky tires under there of course hiding those massive brembo brakes six pistons up front four pistons in the rear here plenty of stopping power just gives you a little indication of what this car was truly bred for underneath that carbon fiber hood the heart of this beast powered by the whipple blower that we all know and love very aggressive calibration in this car according to the guys at shelby pushing right around 800 crank horsepower and believe me when i tell you i certainly felt that thing it absolutely flies from a suspension standpoint you're looking at fully adjustable eibach coilovers specifically designed for this car you can't get them on any other mustang shelby has some special tweaks with these particular coilovers different sway bars on this car as well and it's just all beefed up we got the one-piece drive shaft of course the upgraded half shafts as well and overall this thing is just ready to kick some ass on the track. As for the interior, we do have the Shelby Recaro's Terralingua badge all over them. A nice plaque on the dash sign by Carroll Shelby himself, Bill Neal and Jerry Titus, kind of the originators of the Terralingua race team. We're in an awesome location here out in Las Vegas to really test what these coilovers are all about. So what do you say we hop in and go for a spin? All right, there we go. Woo. Just a little quarter throttle, getting her out a little bit. And this thing just, again, wants to grip, man. Oh, this huge sweeper here. Oh yeah, there's that 800 horsepower they were talking about. This thing's awesome, man, God. It begs you to like just push it harder, and that's kind of what I'm really getting out of this car right now. Oh, these brakes are working just fine. One thing I really like about driving this particular car, and it's something I didn't notice with the GT for whatever reason, it's got a pretty solid cowl on it. I mean, it's not a four inch cowl or anything that crazy, but that being said, the back half of the hood is opened up, so you can kind of see under there a little bit. You see that bright yellow Whipple just staring at you in the face. Just one of the little things about this car that I like. All right, we got some open road. Let's open her up. <laughs> oh my God. I love how this exhaust sounds, by the way, this Ford Performance by Borla stuff. got some bark, but at the same time, you can still really hear that whipple whining hard. I can imagine once you really get this thing out into an open track, 
it just really hauls. Let's do it again. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, triple digits come way too easily in this car. Besides keeping you under 100. Under 100. Under 100. I gotta do one burnout. I mean, it's only tradition, right? For God's sakes. All right, now we can bring it back. Well guys, what can I say? This was an absolutely incredible day at work. We really wanna thank our friends over at Shelby, Keith, Vince, all the guys for making this possible. But unfortunately, we have to return this thing and get to work. So that's gonna do it for this episode of Hot Lap and for the 2016 season of Hot Lap. Sad, I know, but you know what? Maybe one of these years I can hit up Seymour with you. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and honestly, I need a buddy because the show is just too damn big to do by myself. So there you have it. I'm taking her with me next year, guys. Look out for that. We didn't approve that with our boss yet, but we're gonna make it it's happen approved. anyway. There you go. <laughs> I hope you guys had a great year. 2017 promises to be another great year for us and for all things Mustang. Keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.